In this report, I'll provide the superintendent's final budget recommendation for FY25. I'll start with a review of the funds that are included in the superintendent's recommendation. Per policy DC, the board takes action on these aggregate funds annually during budget adoption. The first of the four funds is the general fund, which is the account used for daily operations such as salaries, instructional supplies, and maintenance costs. Next is the special revenue fund, which accounts for grants, school nutrition, and after-school enrichment activities. Next is the capital projects fund, which includes the revenues and expenditures related to capital improvements authorized by the board. And finally, there is the debt service fund, which captures revenue and expenses associated with long-term debt incurred to finance capital projects. These funds, which are required by governmental accounting standards, allow separate tracking of revenues and expenses to ensure public resources are aligned towards intended purposes. A number of external and internal inputs have been considered in developing the budget for each of these funds. The FY25 budget cycle launched in December with the publishing of the budget calendar. In January, the 2024 state legislative session kicked off, our district enrollment forecasting processes were completed, and the board shared priorities around investing in competitive compensation and investing in the community-inspired strategic action plan were publicly addressed. With clarity of priorities, our teams monitored the state legislative session and met with local officials to support development of a preliminary budget outlook, which was presented during the March study session. The tentative budget was adopted in April. The, legis the legislative session has closed, which included the adoption of the state's FY25 budget, and the local tax digest data window has closed. The conclusion of the legislative session and the data digest window positions our system to bring forth the superintendent's final budget recommendation today. There are two proposed changes from the tentative to final budget. First, since tentative tentative budget adoption in April, we received favorable news from the state regarding our QBE funding allotment. Our allotment is 13.7 million more than our original projections. This brings our total general fund revenue projections to 552.9 million. Second, the board's cost, the employer share, for state health insurance for classified employees increased by $900,000. This brings our total general fund expenditures to 561.4 million. The two proposed changes reduce the general fund budget deficit from 21.3 million to 8.5 million, which is very good news. The budget is the board's fiscal commitment that resources are aligned to its stated priorities. Priorities of this board have been collected throughout the budget development process and insights from students, teachers, leaders, and families have also been considered from various advisories hosted by the superintendent. Consideration of the needs of our school system and the voice of our community, the superintendent's budget recommendation incorporates investments in competitive compensation and high quality instructional supports. In subsequent slides, I will review the financial details by each fund, but first, I will provide some highlights of improvements that have been incorporated into the superintendent's proposed budget. Starting with competitive compensation, which is a shared priority of this governing board, the school system's budget is largely comprised of the funds necessary to staff and operate the district. Compensation and benefits account for 86% of the proposed final general fund budget. In support of our system go to retain and recruit highly qualified and effective staff, the superintendent is recommending a number of actions around compensation to include honoring steps within existing salary schedules, which can result in a one to 3% increase for salaried staff year over year, increasing the certified Henry County Schools teacher scale by $2,500, which aligns with the state's proposed increase, increasing classified and administrative scales by 2%, targeting additional compensation investments above 2% to yield a minimum of a $1 per hour increase for the following classified job families, bus drivers, paraprofessionals, elementary clerks, clinic aides, campus monitors, data clerks, school secretaries, district secretaries level one and two, maintenance personnel level one and two, and transportation route planners. The job families identified for the targeted investment support the maintenance of the compensation structure established following the FY22 
compensation and classification study. Other notable compensation items include a recommendation to redesign targeted scales in response to recruitment challenges, including extension of the teacher salary scale to step 25 and the creation of a professional scale which will delineate mid-level exempt positions from the classified and administrative scales. The proposal also includes a recommendation to improve how experience is credited to job families designated as classified and professional. Pending budget approval, Human Resource Services will communicate the training and experience verification process to employees. In terms of investments in high quality instruction and support services, the proposed budget includes the addition of 98 school-based and direct service staff members and 7.5 central support staff as follows. To respond to district growth and services required for our students, the intent is to onboard 17 additional teachers, 15 additional paraprofessionals, and one psychologist. Additionally, 24 teaching allotments have been budgeted to increase access to world languages, orchestra, and computer science engineering. To support Birch Creek Elementary's anticipated opening in August 2024, the budget sets aside funds to hire 12 classified positions, such as the school's clinic aid, clerks, and related type positions. To continue investments in supportive and safe learning environments, the budget calls for the addition of 29 elementary school monitors, and overall funding for the SRO program has been increased in anticipation of SRO unit expansion. Finally, the general budget calls for the addition of two maintenance staff members, a mid-year start for a transportation staff member as the new facility comes online, two information technology staff members, and one HR staff member. Two additional positions are planned for school nutrition and will be funded by its discrete special revenue funding. The budget also includes investments to advance outcomes related to learning, recovery, and literacy. With respect to this board's shared priorities, investing in the community-inspired strategic action plan, I would like to highlight that $44.7 million will be invested across all funds to continue to deliver on the aspirations of Henry County community stakeholders. While I won't review all of the investments, I would like to call out the significant investments aligned to Strategic Action Area 1, which pertains to advancing learning opportunities and experiences for all students. We've already highlighted the investment of 24 positions to expand access to world languages, orchestra, and engineering. We are also set to commence the build of a premier STEM high school site. While not a new investment for our district, this year's general fund budget assumes the cost of mental health and wellness facilitators and data clerks, which were previously funded by ESSER. This spend is directly related to Strategic Action 4. Finally, with respect to advancing a high-performing operational culture, Strategic Action 5 highlights include plans to expand furniture growth and replacement efforts that the board has approved through the establishment of capital accumulation funds. Additionally, we have planned for necessary costs to round out the implementation and sustainment of the new ERP system. Now that we've reviewed highlights, let's dig into each fund, starting with the general fund. At the top of the slide, you can see our FY24 adopted revenues alongside the forecast for revenues for FY25. Given the information available to date, we anticipate year-over-year -year revenue growth of $34.9 million. Some important call-outs of state mandates that are included in the state's FY25 budget but are not fully funded include the $2,500 teacher salary increase, since funding is only received per for positions earned via the QBE allotment sheet and we employ more staff than allotted. The employer paid share for TRS and state health benefit increases, specifically the funding increase requirements for classified staff members that receive no state funding support. Turning our attention to local revenues, the digest growth projection is 4.75%. The superintendent's recommendation for general fund expenditures for FY25 totals $561.4 million, resulting in a per-student expenditure of $12,937 per student, which represents a $1,057 investment increase per student compared to the FY24 budget. This recommendation continues our system's persistence 
and putting resources close to students with 97% of funds aligned to teaching, learning environment maintenance, and direct student services. Turning to the other governmental funds requiring action, special revenues, if you look at the column furthest to the right, you can see we anticipate 63.6 .6 million in special revenues funding. Expenditures are closely aligned, totaling 63.9 million. As a reminder, the special revenues fund is comprised of funding related to direct grants, enterprise activity, and school-based accounting activity. While there are various funds within the special revenues bucket, I would like to highlight two sources of funds that are of particular note. Starting with the American Rescue Plan, which we often refer to as ESSER 3. These funds expire September 30th, 2024, and all funds have been earmarked to accomplish objectives aligned to the frameworks previously communicated and informed by the ESSER survey posted to our website, various advisories, and board organization priorities, such as completing the investments in our learning environments, such as investing in CTAE growth, funding academic learning and recovery efforts that will operate this summer, adding an investment in literacy professional development aligned to science of reading research, and continuing investments that support teacher certification and development through formal mentorships with retired principals and teachers. Regarding Arts for the Arts, which was established to designate funds associated with certain facility rentals to provide funding for investments in fine arts, I would like to highlight this budget plan for investments in phase growth and replacement strategy for band uniforms and will continue to be the funding source for arts-related stipends. Last two funds we will review are the Capital Projects Fund and Debt Service Fund. Regarding capital projects, the board sale of bonds in a prior fiscal year provides the income that will be needed to pay for the $55 million in cost anticipated for East Bluff 6 projects. The revenue generated is related to interest on these bond proceeds held in a construction account. The debt service fund accounts for tax proceeds that are dedicated for the repayment of debt held by Henry County Schools. We forecast collections of 89.9 million and the debt schedule requires 27.4 million of repayments. Additionally, in alignment with the bond structure, it is noted that SPLA 6 funds collected for pay as you go will be transferred to ensure the capital projects fund has necessary resource, resources to accomplish objectives. Next steps, the board will have the opportunity to take final action on the budget this evening after it hosts the second of two required budget hearings at 6.30. Dr. Noten, that concludes what I have prepared and I yield the floor to you.